Hello, this is Kirill from forexboat.com and welcome to the course on Forex trading. In today's tutorial, we will answer the question, what is Forex and where it came from? Forex stands for foreign exchange. It is also sometimes abbreviated as simply FX. Investopedia defines foreign exchange as the exchange of one currency for another or the conversion of one currency into another currency. So simply put, foreign exchange is exchange of currencies. Also, Investopedia continues this definition by saying that Foreign exchange also refers to the global market where currencies are traded virtually around the clock. So let's have a look at an example. Say for instance you're going on a holiday to Europe. In that case you will take your American dollars and go to the exchange shop and convert them into euros. By doing this you've conducted a currency exchange and therefore you have become a participant of the forex market. We will talk about uh, the participants of uh, Forex more in one of the future tutorials, but today let's uh, have a look at the history of how this uh, used to be back in the day, because it wasn't always as easy. So here's a timeline, and a long, long time ago, there was no money, no currencies, and people had to just exchange goods. And this was called barter, when uh, some people would fish and other people would grow grains and crops, they would exchange some of their goods uh, in order to have the best of both worlds. Next, around 2600 BC, Egyptians discovered gold. We're not really sure who discovered gold and when, but it's attributed to Egyptians around that time. People uh, liked gold very much because it was uh, very dense and it felt um, very heavy in your hands and it uh, felt more valuable than other things around. Um, it was shiny and it was soft, so you could mold it into different shapes. And most importantly, it was very scarce. It was very hard to uh, find and um, that also increased its value. Next, uh, around 1500 BC, gold uh, was used or countries started using gold for international trade. So instead of just exchanging goods, they would exchange gold for goods uh, and goods for gold. And that uh, kind of simplified things. Then to simplify things even further, around 700 BC, the first gold coins were created. And uh, that was a very handy thing to have because uh, before that, people had to check that the gold that they're receiving is actually gold and also they had to weigh it up. But by having gold coins, they could already know uh, what value those gold coins are carrying and that speeded up uh, the process of exchange. So that's a bit of ancient history, which now brings us to the modern world. In about the 17th century, paper money started spreading across Europe, and around the 18th century, it became so popular that it started causing tensions, because some people and countries were still using gold and silver coins, whereas others were actively using paper money, and there was no real connection between the two. And that is when uh, the gold standard came into play. The gold standard was... Uh, agreed upon uh, in 1875 and basically what it meant was that currencies became backed by gold reserve of their countries. In essence that means governments guaranteed conversion of currency into a specific amount of gold and vice versa. Let's uh, look at an example. For for instance country A says that it's one, one unit of its currency equals two ounces of gold and country B says that one unit of its currency equals to four ounces of gold and that basically means that you now know how to convert currency of country A into currency of country B. Um, that made uh, things more simple and also defined certain rules around how uh, these transactions occurred and it uh, the gold standard became the first standardized means of exchange in history. So that, that was a good idea in general, but then what happened was World War I struck and World War II. During these wars, uh, countries that were fighting with Germany uh, spent a lot of money on um, their military, and basically uh, they were printing more and more money, and uh, which they had to back by gold reserves, and the gold reserves were rapidly depleting, and it got to a point when they couldn't actually uh, guarantee all that money with gold, and therefore the gold standard lost its meaning. And so to fix that issue, in 1944, the Allies got together to sign the Bretton Woods Agreement. And Bretton Woods Agreement, simply put, it's just the same as the gold standard, gold standard version 2.0. And all it did was it replaced gold with the US dollar. And the US dollar became the only currency in the world that had to be backed by gold at a fixed exchange rate of $35 per ounce. And all other currencies had a fixed exchange rate to the US dollar. So let's have a look at a bit more detail 
in, uh, into the outcomes of the Bretton Woods Agreement. Um, so first of all, uh, fixed exchange rates, all currencies were pegged to the US dollar. Second, uh, the US dollar became the primary reserve currency, which uh, meant that it had to be backed by gold. And three, um, the creation of two uh, organizations, the International Monetary Fund, which is simply a pool of funds where all participating nations contribute to on a regular basis. And then if they have problems within their country, they can uh, take money out of that pool, uh, fix their problems and then return it plus pay some interest and also the world bank which is a financial institution of the united nations meaning that its main purpose is to uh, reduce poverty around the world and um, help developing countries by the way if you're wondering why it's called uh, the Bren woods agreement that's because it was signed in a town called Bren woods in new hampshire usa and as you can expect when you create something which is basically the gold standard version 2.0 then there's a very high likelihood of it failing just as the gold standard did and that's exactly what happened to the Bretton Woods agreement over the years after World War II gold reserves of the U.S. started depleting very rapidly and in 1971 U.S. President Richard Nixon closed the gold window by telling all other countries that the U.S. will no longer exchange gold for U.S. dollars held in foreign reserves. This event marked the end of the Bretton Woods Agreement, and since then, the world has been using floating exchange rates between currencies, what we now know as the Forex market. The main two takeaways from this timeline are that, first of all, it hasn't always been that simple. It took some time for nations to come up with the current Forex system that we have. And secondly, that there have been several attempts at creating fixed exchange rates between currencies, for example, the gold standard and the Bretton Woods Agreement. And all of these events have failed because it is very artificial to put such constraints on currencies and try to control them. It also illustrates that the forex market that we currently have is by far the most natural thing that should govern the exchange rates of currencies between each other. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy trading.